What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Well, hello all in this absolutely lovely, dreary, crappy lovely, I can't make up my mind, lovely, crappy Friday morning, I should say. Um, I have a very special guest coming on my show today. First of all, I say special because if you know me, you already know that it's pretty rare that I do a morning show <clears throat> ever. But unfortunately, due to my physical constraints lately, we had to squeeze Katie in this morning, and I'm so excited that we're squeezing her in. She sounds like an absolutely lovely, amazing actress. So without further ado, let's put her on the line and begin our interview. Good morning, Hello. Katie. I am so excited and nervous I can't stand it. So Oh come on now. All right. Now, now let's start let's start at the beginning. Where are you <laughs> that it's crappy and dreary because I feel Oh my like- gosh. Well, I mean my home base is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My eventual home base will be New York in seven years. So right now I'm looking outside and it is dreary on the outside and raining and my beautiful daughter has a dreary looking face in my living room. So I have a dreary Well that's outside. absolutely the that's my plan too. <laughs> We can just we can really? get a walk up and live, yeah, each one on each floor, because my plan is to be in New York in seven years as well. Oh, my absolutely. God, how funny is that? Oh, that is absolutely no, it's, amazing. It's just the greatest city in the world. What are you going to do? Right. Yeah, you know, and it's it, on my it's list. It's the goal. It's where you got to be. Oh, my God. Um, we and not are only... in Colorado. My, my fiance okay. has a beautiful um, cabin here, and so in between projects, we come here. It's a, it's a condo oh, nice. in Colorado, nice. and it is right okay. now this lovely mix of dreary and gorgeous because it, it feels like it wants to snow, but it's not sure, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of making its decision. But when it does <laughs> snow, I love me a winter wonderland, so you, that's, that's oh, what you that's have to. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, that's, oh. that's what you have to focus on and the other question that I have for you my dear before we even get yes. into anything else is yes. how are you feeling how are you doing well I have to say wow I am not used to my guests coming on and cornering me you're paying attention I like that um well I have well to say, it's, it's I not would... cornering it's asking <laughs> it's asking how you're feeling because we care sweet. That's very sweet. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been a professional writer for half of my life so when come you know so in the last year it's been very it's it's time to slow down, and I'm not doing very well with that. I just got commissioned to do 100 pages in a very short time, and I'm very nervous. And I have a lot of loved ones that are screaming at me, don't do this, don't do this. It's very difficult. It's very challenging. Um, I love what I do, and I'm in film, and I'm in all sorts of – there's a lot of expectations. As you know, in this industry, people need you to write things so they can act. People need – shows so they can get exposure. If I give that up, I'm disappointing everyone that I love. Absolutely. So I'm in a very tough quandary. And well, and I have a guy at my door every five days asking me to marry me, marry him. So, <laughs> so I got a guy wow. at my door. Well, that's, me not, not, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good thing. Well, but I'm going to quote, yeah. I'm going to quote this quote by Victoria Erickson that I actually put on Instagram about two weeks ago. And it reads, okay, are you feeling a bit shaken, maybe stirred, maybe fearful and doubtful and completely, utterly, wildly terrified? Good. Keep going. Oh, I like that. I so like yep. that. I'm so quoting that later. That awesome. I'm at the real oh Katie gosh. Winky. Go on there and you'll you'll see all kinds of quotes about being yes. terrified and being a woman yes. in this industry and, and uh yes. you know, and confronting all of those fears. But kicking ass. Kicking yeah, ass just like the lying. Allen Wicks in, 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 in Daylight Sucks. That's what it's yes. all about. We have a character exactly in there. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daylight Sucks is a is a um, a project that my fiance and creator of the project, Craig Hurley, um, mm-hmm. came up with a good 25 or 30 years ago. And it's about it's a comic book. It's about a family of vigilante vampires that fight mm-hmm. uh, those who harm those who cannot protect themselves. And one of our one of my favorite characters in there is Madison Allen Wick. She looks like she's 16. She actually is over Hmm. 150 years old, and she is about women's rights. 
Okay. And uh, she's she 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 she's she's a real she's a real ball buster. If we're talking about anybody that wants to hold a woman back in any way, and hmm. so she's she's yeah. And the other characters in the show in the uh, in the in the comic book are uh, uh, Ashley Allen Wick. She is about environment. She's about uh, animal rights. Uh, Max Allen Wick is about anybody, he fights anyone who has prejudice against races or the LGBTQ community. Um, mm. James Allen Wick is, uh, he is about one world. He wants to see a world without borders. And all of these characters have physical inspirations, and they are inspired by Rahart Adams, Tyler Alvarez, Paris Smith, Autumn Wendell, and then there are other characters in the comic book like Esperanza Martinez, who is a very brave uh, illegal, uh, undocumented immigrant in the United States who's trying to find her father. She is uh, visually inspired by the amazing Alexa Pomales, who's a huge telenovela star, and her father is visually inspired by none other than Guy Ecker, who is a telenovela legend. So wow. these are all characters in this comic book that are about a family of vigilante vampires that fight for the rights of those who cannot fight for themselves for whatever reason. Uh, my well. the character that I visually inspire is Eva Allen Wick, and she is about right. women's rights. She's about children's rights. And my husband, my fellow clan leader, is George Allen Wick, and he mm -hmm. is visually inspired by Arab Bebke, mm -hmm. who is also a fantastic telenovela star. Who I just I've done two telenovelas with, and we've we've had a very successful mm -hmm. run as co-stars. And George is about. Uh, unfortunately, the the effects on humanity of the negative the negative effects of religion. There are very positive effects of religion, but the negative mm -hmm. effects of religion are the control over the masses, and so he fights for that, and he fights for children's rights as well. And uh, it's it's a fantastic project, and it's it's very timely. But it it brought me around to that because we're talking about being a woman in the entertainment industry, and 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 right. how difficult that can be. Sure. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Now, I wanted to ask this question since you brought up the Daylight Sucks thing to start with. Um, now, you were the visual inspiration for this character, and what I find amazing is that she's just so clueless about the fact that she's so aged. You know, she has no comprehension whatsoever. Just she's a much well, she doesn't know character. how long she's been on the planet. Oh, my okay. God. Try hiding that age. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she doesn't know, you know how long she's been around. She actually has forgotten. She's been around pretty much uh, okay. since the beginning of time. And okay. uh, there are connotations to her name, which is Eva, and there are connotations right. to to what her position is in on this planet and where she okay. came from. But she does not know. All of that gotcha. will be revealed in, in due time. Uh, oh, my so my fiancé, Craig, has a – he just has – this extraordinary imagination and the story that's been in his head for so many years and uh and, and it's 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 unbelievable how he has it all wrapped up but he won't tell us how it ends so i can't really tell you where it is that eva actually came from and where she okay. when she actually came to the planet earth because i i sure. don't actually know that's information that only he has I gotcha. Well, of course, we would ask him that, but we'll have to ask him to come on my show then. I'll have to literally say, hey, Craig Hurley, do you want to come on my show? Because I love, 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 love talking to creative chameleons, anybody that has dual roles, meaning like who oh, can act or write or could he business. Is easily right? the most talented human being that I've ever met, um, and I'm I'm very lucky to – to have him by my side. We did uh, we did a project together when I was 17 and he was 20. It was called Aww. Freddy's Nightmares. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 one of them crazy stories. I got to tell it. Um, we did a project called Freddy's Nightmares. I don't know if you remember the whole Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Freddy, oh, Freddy yes. Krueger or Slasher. Thing. Okay. Yes. Well, after they had done like six or seven or eight or 18 movies of, of Freddy's Nightmares and they had or, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and they had exhausted that franchise. They did a series with Robert England, and Robert England produced it, and it was kind of Twilight zone in that every week there was a new cast. And okay. so Robert England produced, and he was not directly responsible for the killings any longer. He really wasn't in, in the films either. He would, he would infiltrate the brains of the teenagers um, and cause them to do these hideous things. But it happened once a week, uh, different, different storylines. And my character that week was a young girl that wanted to get out of Springwood. Everybody wants to get out of Springwood. And my, sure. my, uh, my boyfriend, 
Craig says it's snowing. Uh, that he knows that makes me happy. Um, my boyfriend, Craig. who uh, who was just played by who was played by Craig, and who was this rebel without a clue, really hot rebel who has his hot rod. And the only thing he wanted to do was get out of Springwood the wrong way. He wanted to take his car and drive out of Springwood. And I wanted to go to college and make something of my life. Well, he gets killed halfway through the episode, and then I go to college and I join a sorority and I kill every all the sorority sisters. So uh, that week that we were on the show together, I would literally, I mean, I just the man would walk into makeup or, or, or wardrobe or onto the set, and I would sweat the adolescent sweat. I was 17, and I oh would gosh. freak out every time he rocked in. He was literally, he was the cutest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And he paid me absolutely no mind, no attention, and, uh, you know, only in the scenes, and he was sweet to me, but, you know, he, he kept his distance. He says now that it's because he was 20, he was overage, and I was 17, I was underage. Um, right. I say it was the 80s hair. We're never really <laughs> going to know. You know, the 80s hair and maybe some, maybe some skin acne issues that I might have had, that was what my, that, that's what I think held him back. But he says okay. that it was because I was underage. Anyway, oh uh, 23 goodness. years went by. He wrote a book called 27 and All Washed Up about his trials and travails in the entertainment industry. Again, he's, a, he's an extremely creative human being that you should have on the show because sure. it's really interesting to, to listen to him talk. He's got a lot going on in his head. But anyway, um, he did this, he no, did this I need, book. No, I need, I need to stop you for a second and ask you a question. Yes. Because, uh, and let me interject this to tell the listening audience this, because I have the benefit of having creeped on her page significantly and read about her and talked to other people about her, meaning Katie. Um, And the one thing that I thought was so, I I want you to address this. She had written about how Craig is her best friend and how he inspires her so much. So I want you to talk a little bit about how you as a person, professionally and personally, have become better because of this relationship and the support in it. Tell us a little bit about this man that stands next to this absolutely amazing, courageous woman. Well, um, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. I think that, uh, well, there are, there are many levels. There are many levels. I mean, we can start with Daylight Sucks, which is a project that I'm now completely involved in. I never thought that I would be a comic book producer. I'm thrilled that I am. Hmm. It's way too much fun. And it's, it's a very complex story. We have, you know, over 20 actors with really, really good names in the entertainment industry as, as licensing. We have them licensed right. as images in this. I mean, it, what I'm referring to is on a production level, it's complex. We've got two <clears throat> fantastic uh, uh, graphic artists in, in Colombia. I mean, Colombia the country, not, not the university, mm-hmm. uh, named mm-hmm. Juan Pablo Solarte and Brigitte Lopez, and they are extraordinary talents. We have a co-producer named Mauricio Toro that I brought onto the project. So it's a collaborative effort uh, that we have all that we have put together. But it started with Craig's idea. We wouldn't be doing it without him. So I can start there, but there's okay. so much more. And hmm. I think that if you're with the right person, if you're with the right man, he will build you up. He will not tear you down. He will build you up, and he will tell you, this that you have accomplished is awesome. Now go for this. What are you doing over here? Fight. Be stronger. Be braver. Um, get up every morning and know that you can do this. No, I can't. Oh, my God, I can't do it. No, I just can't do it. Yes, you can. Every day. And that is what he does. I am at the forefront right now. I'm working with sag who I have been a very proud member of for the last 32 years, to get uh, Latino actors unionized with uh, that are working at Telemundo to get Latino mm-hmm. actors unionized and uh, to get Telemundo, which is a, a subsidiary a subsidiary of Comcast and NBC Universal, to uh, to unionize and do their projects that they do in Miami, SAG-AFTRA. Why is this? Because as it is right now, uh, we work on a project for Telemundo. I am very grateful for every job that I have ever done in the telenovela industry. I want to make that very clear. But any project that I've done in Mexico has been under the Mexican Union, ANDA, which means that to this day, that's Asociación Nacional de Actores, National Association of Actors, and that Mm -hmm. means that to this day I receive residuals, which is – 
uh, a small percentage of the sales from the product right. if my name, my image, and my my uh, my resume, the, you know, the fact that I've built up a fan base, helps to sell mm-hmm. that product. We should receive residuals. And for American actors working in the United States, it's normal. It's just something that they expect on any program you can think of, anything that might go through your mind, anything from uh, any project on Netflix to anything that's uh, on HBO, Showtime, Network, it doesn't matter. All of those projects, all of those actors receive their their residuals for their work. Telemundo, they're, um, they're, by their own admission and by their own uh, good grace and by their own, uh, um, you know, pride, and, and they should be proud of this, their, um, their ratings now rival the ratings of any network television show in English or Spanish, meaning we are on the par with ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and any cable any, any cable network um, as far as ratings go because 40% of the overall population of the United States is now Latino, so it would stand to reason. Mm-hmm. However, our programs are not produced union, meaning we get a buyout, which is moderate, compared to what they make on the project in national sales and international sales, and we never receive a dime again. So because of that, as, as well as, as, as benefits, uh, you know, uh, anything, our health insurance, we get no health insurance, we get no uh, Social Security benefits, we get nothing. It's a buyout, mm-hmm. and when it's over, it's over. You're only paid during the time that, you're, that you are in production on the project, and that's it. We never mm-hmm. see it again. I would never have had uh, crudely the balls to go and do this and be at the forefront of the fight with SAG-AFTRA to get uh, Latino actors unionized if I had not, in fact, borrowed Craig's balls years ago. I'm not wearing mine. I'm wearing his. And he pushes me forward every day. So if you are with the right man, he will build you up. He will, he will make you see that you're stronger than you ever thought you could be that you're wiser, that you're more talented than you, ever, than you ever thought you could be. And he has done that for me, independently of, of, uh, of, of Daylight Sucks and this fantastic project that we're doing and, and that we're doing as a collaborative effort. But it started with him. He created it. It's his idea. So, you know, I, I have a lot to be, to be grateful for in the relationship. And I'm also grateful that he lets me build sure. him up, you know, because that's Aww. important too. If it were – if it were just the one side, that would not be good. But if you know, he no. he allows me to to build him up and to remind him of what he is and what he's worth every day. And so that's that's where it's equal, and that's where you know that's where you need to be. Did you hear that, folks? That's what we call an awe moment on the show, and we don't get those all the time. But I love that. <laughs> you, I'm so the romantic chick. I'm like totally. I can talk about romance all day long, and I'm like, oh, Craig, I'm your cheerleader now, dude. You're so coming on my show. It, this is just a done <laughs> deal. I'm just saying that right now. I'm like, dude, you're so coming on my show. Um, oh, cool. Okay, so, I'll enjoy that. Before I forget, now I want to ask about this because I know that Daylight Sucks actually launched on October 25th. So here we are now, it did. In, in beginning December. So how's it doing? How's it going? I just want to get a general sense of how things are going. It is. Us. It is getting the most incredible feedback that you can imagine because the the Mm storyline is so timely with what we're dealing with right now. You know, Uh, there are are different groups that are, that are concerned about their uh, moving forward in, in the United States and how their issues and their needs and their, they're, they're going to be, they're sensitive to that. The the sensitivity aspect is, is high within different groups. There's, you know, uh, I actually, my, the character that I was more responsible in the project of Daylight Sucks, only because Craig had the idea of the family of vigilante vampires for all of these years. But then when we decided to do it as a collaborative effort, he said, okay, now I need you to write the telenovela aspect of this, which is what I know. I've done over 20 telenovelas. Um, Mm -hmm. So I understand that. And I wrote the telenovela aspect of it with Esperanza Martinez, who is this very brave, undocumented immigrant to the United States. And I want to show, we want to show, because everything has to go, has to be approved by by the two of us. We are a collaborative effort. Of course. But we want to show the other side of undocumented immigrants of this of the United States in the United States. First of all, you know, not 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 the criminals that have been so spoken about, but then again, there has to be sensitivity to the word criminal. Because if somebody okay. was is an un, undocumented immigrant in the United States and they were arrested because they had marijuana on them that they were not selling but merely smoking, then they are labeled a criminal, but it's a nonviolent crime. 
and they are at risk of being deported at this moment, which is another story, but anyway, I thought I'd throw mm-hmm. that in there. Sure. There are sure. people that come to this country that love this country more than we do because they fight way harder to get here, you know, than, than, <laughs> sure. than those of us that just have our, our birthright, you know. And so Peranza is one of those characters. And in issue one, her boyfriend is also one of those characters who talks about how they really just want the opportunity to wake up in this country every day, how they, they, they revere and they, and they love this country so much that they just want to be a part of it and that if they have to work 15 jobs, they'll work 15 jobs. They don't want to take anything from any, any American. They don't want to abuse any American's rights. They just want the opportunity to be here with them and experience the greatness that is the freedom of this country. That story has to be told. And that story is opened up in issue one of Daylight Sucks. So it's, it's, it's been an extraordinary experience for those who have seen it, who have purchased it. It's getting a lot of, of tremendous feedback because it's important. It's an important story that has to be told. And then the story of the Alan Wicks and who they defend, you know, this is a long project. We, <laughs> we, already, have, hmm. we already have a breakdown for at least the first uh, two years of the comic book. You know, this is a long, oh and we're not, we're not even getting started yet. You know, what's in Craig's imagination and what he he has yet to tell us about uh, the story of these characters and, and, and who they defend and why is uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, we just, we just got out the gate. The feedback has been absolutely right. amazing. And we're really excited. We're excited for the comic book world to get, to get more privy to it because, um, sure. you know, with, with the licensing agreements with the actors that we have, these actors are famous because of a project we did together on Nickelodeon called – Every Which Way, uh, that was yep. number one for four seasons. And uh, so Rahart, Tyler, Paris, uh, um, Autumn, Jason Drucker, who is, by the way, the new wimpy kid, and we're so unbelievably proud of him, mm. Louis Tomeo, mm. uh, Jackie mm. Frazee. These are all actors from, from Every Which Way. Uh, Jimmy Bernal, these are all actors from that genre. And then Guy Ecker, uh, Arabevke, Maite um, um Daniela Macias, these are all, uh, Alex Apomales, these are all actors from the Latin market with massive fan bases is what I'm trying to get to. Hmm. Uh, I mentioned Autumn, I think. Autumn Wendell from uh, Every Which Way is also on there. We love hmm. her, and she's just perfect for the role of Ashley. Um as a visual inspiration, because that's who she is. She's all about the environment. She's all about animal rights. Uh, Nick Mariko, Zoe Berger, also from Every Which Way, will soon be launched, and that's going to be so exciting for the fans. But w- the point is, is that these actors have their fan base, and that fan base is responding amazingly to the project, but they're not necessarily the comic book industry. So we're really excited right. about the comic book industry becoming privy to this project as well, because uh, we, th- we think they're going to, uh, we, we know they're going to love it. Juan Pablo Solarte, who is our, who are, is our, our graphic designer and our, our lead uh, our lead artist truly uh the man lives in cali colombia he had dreamed of being uh being a part of a project like this his entire life in colombia the opportunities are limited because there are not as many it's, it's just the comic book industry in colombia is not what it is compared to the united states and uh, the comic book industry is going to be blown away by this man's talent and by Brigitte Lopez's mm-hmm. talent as a uh, as a colorist. So we're excited. Mm-hmm. We're excited for the comic book industry to find out about it. Everything has its time and its place, and we're moving toward you know everybody finding out about it in in due time with the help mm-hmm. of wonderful people like yourself. But it's oh, going goodness. amazing. Thank you. It's going amazing. Now I have. Now, this kind of begs to ask the question, because one of the things that I thought about when I saw this and I thought, oh, he's got a graphic novel series and it's comic book form. Is there any um, foreseeable in the foreseeable future, any thoughts about uh, taking this interpretation and putting it onto a screen, onto a stage, meaning making it more visual for people outside of the comic book? Because obviously it's in book form. Well, it's not surprising I mean, it's, to go that way. The comic book industry right now is the number one industry when it comes to when it, when it comes to adaptations for screen and, and television. That's not what we're focused on right now. We want to we want to okay. we want to make sure, you know, it we really can't focus on that. And the reason is again, I had no idea what I was getting into as a as a producer of there are so many moving parts and when you're dealing with artists, mm-hmm. this many artists, you know, artists are are, are they have their own timeline for things. <laughs> they just oh, do. Yeah. 
So as a oh, producer, yeah. you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to keep everybody kind of, you know, at all of the moving parts going and we're and and it's so interesting because I spoke to a friend here in Denver. I brought her a copy of the comic book because her brother is an artist and she she looked at the comic book and she looked at the quality of it. We have an excellent printer here at so publication printers in Denver mm-hmm. who who does printing for everyone around the world and the the paper that they chose is just it's just so pretty and it's so classy. It's such a classy Wow. project and my my friend said people don't understand what goes into doing something like this oh my god true words were never spoken you know <laughs> so right now i believe that in order to in order to in order for anything else to happen in your life you have to do it correctly from 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 you know from out the gate and out the gate, right. we are producing this comic book, and we want to make sure that anybody who is interested in the storyline or who is a fan of these actors that are the visual inspirations for the characters, humbly myself included, or who mm-hmm. is just a fan of the comic book genre, we want to make sure that everybody is satisfied with the product that they're getting. So that has to be the nice. singular focus right now, you know? Sure. No, I understand. Yeah. I do. Totally. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I can't wait to now send we... you one. I can't wait to find out what you think. Well, wait till the very end of this interview because I have some things to offer the both of you because that's what we do on my show. We like to do great interviews and all this good jazz, and then at the end, we we give you goodies to go away with. And since I hear that barking, I'm going to guess. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that that's that beautiful white dog that you possess because I see that you on is Instagram with that lovely dog. Absolutely. <gasps> and oh, I, can, I, I can let you in on a little secret. Uh-oh. Shuggy yeah. is a cast member of Daylight Sucks. Get and out. You ain't, ne- you ain't never seen a cuter drawing in your life, lady. You ain't oh never God, seen a cuter, curious. fuzzier drawing. She is one oh of three God. cast members, one of three characters. Okay. It's Luna, Layla, sure. and Zuri. And there are three little, there are three little teeny tiny dogs. And one of them is uh, the visual inspiration is Paris Smith, real life uh, Maltese Bella. And then the third okay. visual inspiration is my silver, my Shih Tzu, who passed on some time sure. ago. But uh, she is also a cast member of of Daylight Sucks. And then there are also two bigger dogs that, in my opinion, are not anywhere near as cute. But Craig mm-hmm. loved them, and they are they're visual <laughs> inspirations of uh, of the characters or two of his his dogs that have now passed on. So. I got gotcha. you. Everybody's that, included. So there this we is go. a family venture. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna roll back a little bit. We're gonna talk about when you were a child, of course, because I like to always do the backdrop behind the, before we get to the person that you are right now. Let's talk a little bit about who you used to be. Obviously, wow. of course, you started somewhere around the age of ten. And what I thought was so cool was the notation about how you were on stage with an opera company as a child. I have a huge love affair with opera. Um, so I want to talk do. about that a little bit. Oh, wow. I've never been to an opera. I, I have loved opera from afar for my entire life. So when I go to Italy, that'll be the first time that I'm exposed to opera, and I'm immensely excited. So I want you to talk well, about it's, that. It's, yeah, it's an, extraordinary, it's an extraordinary genre in the arts. It's where I started, actually. Right? My mother is a, a singer, dancer, actress, mostly stage her entire life, and mm-hmm. I became very interested in it when I, at first, you know, when I was five and six, and I would hear her singing opera in my ear all day long. It was irritating as a child, but I grew to appreciate the genre, and then I started taking singing classes and okay. uh, became a, a a member of the child's uh, chorus at the Nevada Opera, mm-hmm. and I did La Boheme, I did uh, Macbeth, I'm not supposed to say oh. that word, but I did, and uh, <laughs> and uh, actually I did one other opera, and it's escaping me right now, but I was, I was a member of the children's chorus, and it was extraordinary. Oh, I could sing an E flat above high C by the time I was 10. They didn't like it too much that I did that because you can damage your vocal cords, but I could. Right. And I have kept up my um, my my singing. I love I love to sing. It is uh, one of my favorite things to do. And uh, I, I yeah I have training from the time I was a child. I was a member. I can't believe you you went back and found that in my bio. That's mm-hmm. extraordinary. Welcome to my yep. world. I was a well, member of yeah, the children's wait. chorus. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's my question. Because you have that singing background, it's not unusual, and I and I couldn't find it in my research, so I'm just going to ask you flat out. Have you taken that skill with you, and meaning in roles or in other things, have kind of insisted, and not necessarily insistent, but wanted to utilize that skill that you have? Have you been given opportunities in your acting career to be able to utilize the singing component? Sure. Um, I have done I have done several uh, musicals and rock operas. Mostly, I did them in Mexico. They were translated into Spanish. That's I did a rock opera version, ironically, of Dracula. I played Lucy, 
and that was extraordinary. At the time, I was like, I'm not really into vampire projects, but okay. And and look at me now. <laughs> um, and I did, uh, I did, I love you. You're perfect now. Change in Spanish in uh, oh nice in in Mexico, which is a challenging play because it's only four actors and uh, it's 16 vignettes about uh, the the process of the of of the relationship. Uh, between two people from almost from its blind date to to becoming a widow and mm-hmm. so that's an extraordinarily fun play and I did that anytime I've been able to involve my singing in in any in any type of project and I've done personal appearances where I've sung and I've you know anytime sure. I've been able to do it absolutely I love I love to so yes. like for instance if you were invited to like come to New York City which is like your most favorite place in the entire world and ironically it is my most she is a fan of Sex in the City, and now people call me the Carrie Bradshaw of Wisconsin and not New York. I'm hoping to become the Carrie Bradshaw of New York when I finally get to New York. So let's say somebody like me calls you up and says, you know what? Yeah, I, I got this thing in June, a uh, very large film festival that I have founded that I'm having in New York City, and I would love you to stop and pop on in and come and sing for me. Would you do that? It, it, now, is this, have to this, beg? is this a scenario, or are you actually asking me? <laughs> no, this me? is real life. No, no, I'm oh really asking Oh, my God, are you kidding me? I would love sound like I'm to. Kidding? I will start rehearsing <laughs> now. It's at the Producers Club. I'm actually running a four-day independent film festival. It's one of the thousands of things that I do, and I, uh, I've worked the festival circuit for a very long time, and I've come to find out that the art, some of the art is not – where it needs to be. It's become very political. And so I, I'm wow. doing a very large festival. I'm very excited. Um, I like my musicians, and I have a bunch that are coming already. I'm very blessed. I, I have friends across the board, actors, musicians, directors, producers, and I'm very excited. So it just occurred to me, she loves New York City as much as I, and I really am kind of like that Terry Bradshaw, and I have this venue, and she's an opera, and you're beautiful, and I'm like so sucked into your eyes. Yes, Craig, I'm not hitting on your girlfriend, but... <laughs> You're just breathtaking. You're a very breathtaking individual, and and I'm sure well, the moment you sing, it will just be breathtaking. So that's why I'm oh, like, oh wow, what's, what's I'm she already say nervous no? and exciting. My palms are already. Oh, don't worry, sweating. it gets better. I, I, it gets better. It'll get better during this interview. Just wait. That's not all the goodies we got, but I, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, now, I want to talk about this because I think this is important. I don't often get individuals who come on my show. First of all, this lovely lady we're speaking to is born in Mexico, and I know that you're infamous because you started off in the Latin soap operas. So I want you to talk about two different things. Obviously, lifestyle in the arts being from a country like Mexico, most of us don't understand what that's like. So talk a little bit about that. And then, of course, talk to us a little bit about, obviously, I come from the general hospital generation. So I, I'm not familiar with your genre, meaning the, the other yeah. version of that. So talk to me about how that varies. Um, uh, is the artistic style the same? Well, uh, you know, the, 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 I come from the general hospital generation as well. I am a huge right. fan of uh, – I, I was an ABC girl. I see that you were as well. General Hospital, mm-hmm. One Life to Live, and All My Children every Amen. day cannot be mm-hmm. avoided. Amen. Thank yes. God for VCRs. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, when, I, when I went to Mexico, um, I, I was born in Mexico, and I was raised uh, between the two countries, the United States and Mexico, my whole life. But I spent 10 years in, in Los Angeles as a teenage actress. And when I went to Mexico to do a project for Televisa, which is the biggest distributor of telenovelas in the world, mm-hmm. Um, I did. I was doing what was known as a telenovela, and I'll explain that genre in English. Okay. And they were a bit ahead of their time. They did three of them. They did one called uh, The Guilt, another one called The Empire, and another one called Acapulco Bay. I was the antagonist on Acapulco Bay. And the difference between the telenovela genre and the um, and the soap opera genre is that the soap opera genre number one is daytime, and number two it can last somewhere between thirty and fifty years on the air, where at the wow. Novela is prime time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, our, okay. our shows, they were, on the year, uh, they were on the air all those years. A telenovela sure. can last only six to eight months on the air, and then you move on and you do another one, and they are prime time. They're like really, really long miniseries. So when okay. I went down to do this project, I was reconnecting with my family in Mexico. I thought, great, you know, I'll do this. Awesome. And, uh, you know, can stay with my dad. I hadn't spent a lot of time with my dad. And I did this project, and they were a bit ahead of their time. They didn't end up selling it to Fox like they had planned on doing and what have you, those three projects. Mm -hmm. But they did offer me a contract at Televisa to do telenovelas when they found out I was born in Mexico. They said, you know, we think that 
you already have a fan base because of some of the things that you've done, a couple of Disney films that have done really well here in Mexico that you did and whatever. So we'd like to offer you this contract. And I said, I did not have, I was not brushed up on my Spanish at the time. So I said, hmm. yo no hablar muy bien el español, yo no saber. And they said, that's okay. We have a, we have a, um, a coach, a diction coach that is going to work with you. And um, there were two, actually, Fernando Torre La Fam, who was an extraordinary actor who we have, you know, since lost. And the other one was Adriana Barraza, and she was very tough. She was a fantastic diction coach. She had me speaking as if I was born and raised in Mexico in six months. And I was already wow. working in the telenovela genre in Spanish. And that mm-hmm. lady's name is none other than Adriana Barraza, who was later nominated for an Oscar for uh, nice. her role in the film Babel with uh, Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. Gotcha. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just one more of the, of the aspects of the entertainment industry for me that I opened up mm-hmm. beginning to do telenovelas because you know actors can do somewhere. Actors in general, if you talk about all of the commercials, voiceover, uh, television and film, uh, series regular and guest starring down to every different type of, of role you can audition for. We can audition for somewhere, you know, you can do an audition, which is a job interview, somewhere between 50 and 150,000 job interviews in a lifetime, easy. It just is that it's it can really come down to that. That can be how many job interviews you can do, <laughs> especially if you consider okay. how many times an agent submits you for that job interview. It's a lot of right. job interviews in a lifetime. But in this case, it's a genre that opened up to me um, because I was doing this, this version in English of this telenovela, and they decided to shoot it in Mexico, in Televisa, for the American market, and they tried to do that. It opened up for me. And the, the telenovela genre, it's, it's fast. It's, uh, you, you have to be on your game as an actor um, because – you know they only are they're going to do between one and two uh takes of the scene hopefully it's three camera it's uh it's for me it's been a lot of fun you know i mm-hmm. i want to see uh actors in the in the telenovela genres um who sh- who shoot uh, in the united states i want to see their situations improve as far as unionizing sure. goes but other than that of course. i have had a lovely experience working in that industry and uh they're very very successful around the world it gives you a fantastic fan base full of amazing people that get in contact with you and that just make your life better every day and uh i i i i can only say lovely things about the the telenovela industry it's um it's only different in the united states in that it's non union that's uh, that's really all i can mm. say that's the only negative thing other than that right. you're working with extraordinary actors who have you know their their experiences and their schools from different parts of the world from mexico from cuba from colombia and uh they're all very special people and very professional, you know, by and large in general terms. And uh, it's been a tremendous fun. You know, I, I love I love doing it. Now, maybe I've been hit with a stupid stick, and sometimes people can say that about me, or I can say that. But I'm curious. I was so expecting the first time I listened to an interview that you did that you were going to be talking with that very thick accent, and you sound like me. And I think that's kind of strange. It's not bad, but I'm like, she still sounds like me. So if I met you, I would have never thought that you were from Mexico, let alone, I mean, I would have thought, do you know what I mean? You sound normal. (laughs) Am I making sense? Like, you don't have an accent. I, like, expect you to have an accent. Oh well, it's uh, no. I mean, I, I I was I was born I was born in Mexico. I was I was raised in both countries, and it gives okay. you it gives it gives you a tremendous advantage to be bilingual. I I made sure that oh, I, agree. I didn't have an act. You know, English is my first language because I started out. I grew up in the United States. I was born in Mexico, but I grew up in the United States. My mother's American. Gotcha. Okay. So English is my first language, but Spanish, you know, is. Um, is a language that I that I did my best to dominate and to make it and with the help of Adriana Barraza, um, you know, and 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 wonderful people that have been my diction coaches all through these years. Um, okay. It, it it's important to speak as if you are a native, so that you you know if I didn't I wouldn't be working as much as I have. So you know you don't want to break down those opportunities. You need to conquer oh, that accent. So I did do that. Oh no, I, have I, been, uh, I have been I have been I have been 
not i've i've been informed that actors actually have somewhere around 5 to 10,000 interviews over a lifetime which is still way oh too much God. uh but wow. uh, but it's closer to that than 50,000 so there you go so i i i, I need to I, I needed to fact check that and clarify that piece of information no 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 so that's that. perfectly understandable i get it no i was just sitting here and i'm thinking that and the first time i listened to her i thought oh my god she's so articulate and she totally sounds like me and i'm like oh my goodness gracious um I need to interrupt you for two seconds because I need to just say one really fast thing. I heard you. Take your candy. My daughter's leaving. <laughs> Sorry, when you do a home show on the radio. like No, it's so funny. No, because I'm here with my dog and, and with Craig, and, you know, I'm dealing with absolutely. Yeah, when you do a home I show. Right? It's like a – it's totally like a, a morning – it's a morning chit chat before I'm going to the doctor. So I was like so excited and so nervous all at the same time. And now that she walked out the door, I could very, I could very quickly say to my listening audience, please keep my daughter in your prayers. She would kill me if she heard this. But I, uh, my daughter is 21 years old and, uh, Oh she my suffers gosh. a broken heart. Yes, she has a little broken heart, and there's a boy that's making her feel bad, and mom wants to beat the crap out of him right now, and she doesn't oh, quite wow. understand that. I'm like, I still want to beat him up right now. I want to go to the school and knock him off his block. It's making my little well, girl Craig feel will, bad. Well, Craig will tell you, Craig will tell you, and I think I, I, I can say it as well. You know, these, these life experiences, you know, teenager and post-teenager in your 20s and what have you, they're to learn and they're to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, getting getting serious with somebody at that age, you know, they're still, mm-hmm. they're still serious, like we're talking marriage and all that kind of stuff. I know. Together. I know. The boy put a ring on her finger, and I'm like, oh, my God, she's 20. And I'm thinking, <gasps> When I was 20 years old, we weren't doing rings on the finger, okay? We were, well, we were doing things. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you're young. Craig, you says, she, Craig says she needs to wait until she's 40, and she's done everything that she wants to do in this life as a woman before she starts worrying about taking care of a man, honestly. Oh, well, see, that's just it. And and I've said that before, and I'm like, okay, fine. So if you decide that you guys are on social media and you look me up on Facebook, you'll see a beautiful picture of her. She's radiant. I mean, she is a lovely, lovely woman. I wish I looked Aww. like my child. <laughs> She's beautiful. Well, please send, her, please send her all our love and tell her I, that, I it, that that this is this is not something – that's actually real in the grand scheme of her life. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's something that's hard to hear, but this pain and this heartache that she's feeling, she needs to use it to become stronger, to strengthen herself as a woman and as a human being, and know that this too shall pass and that she has millions of other experiences mm-hmm. that she's going to have in this life. And that she needs to, you know, as far as her career and as far as her ambitions and as far as, you know, other relationships, if this one isn't working out. And, you know, if if it's meant to work out, it's because he shows her that he she is uh, just as important to him in his life as he is. That's, oh, definitely. That's oh, no, I, I, I definitely agree. I, I'm sure. She, she's going to be fine. She's got her strength of her mother, so I think that it will work. I'm just a little concerned and worried. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then when I found out she was here, I'm like, oh, honey, I have to go on the air and ignore you now. And she's like, it's okay, Mom. So it's the life of the radio Aww. person. So I feel bad. Aww. But I'm like, you know what? She's going to be back here in two days, so I'm feeling okay. You will well, be send here in two her, days, send unfortunately. Her <laughs> I will do that. Now, the next thing, we jump around on the show a lot. So let's talk about lessons and loss. How'd you get that gig? That must have been so much fun. That was a week long. Oh, that right? was awesome. That was awesome. Right. That was Discover that was Discovery Channel. And what right. they did, I did nothing. What they did was they did uh, they had a marketing research team find out mm-hmm. which actress in their opinion bilingual because they wanted a bilingual actress for the spot. Sure. Uh and it was for me to host throughout the week uh different real life scenarios that might be that you might see in a soap opera or you know or in the telenovela genre and they mm-hmm. chose me they went online they looked at different uh they they looked at different uh pieces on YouTube that that fans have put up there and there's this one montage of me slapping people there's this one ah. montage, montage of me slapping men and women, okay, and it's Katie. Katie Cachetadas at Katie, and it's Katie slaps, and uh, and they said, you know, we have because Susan Lucci was at the helm of of uh, of, right. of uh, the Discovery ID, um, you know, uh, 
weekly it was it's a it's a soap opera hosting week for soap opera stars and she was at the helm okay. of that and they have other fantastic soap opera stars that do it so i was so honored when they decided to bring in a telenovela star and they chose me to to host for that week with these people that i have admired you know my entire life ken Schreiner and and uh and susan lucci and and just oh, extraordinary yeah? actors who i love and because i've always been a fan of the soap opera genre but they did that they they did this research and they found this video that I didn't even know existed and it was Cachetadas de Katie Katie slaps and they're like do you know that you've slapped more people than Susan Lucci has and I'm like wow that's a rare distinction but there you go so oh my gosh how fun yeah is so that? I didn't that's do neat. anything that was just that was just a, a cool. very joyful gift that life gave me yes yeah. yeah. oh and I bet that's amazing now yeah. uh, we need to talk about Mar. <laughs> it's a pronounced mariposa did I get that right mariposa yeah mariposa okay. is uh is butterfly okay. in Spanish Yes. And one of these shows that I did with actually the visual inspiration for the character of George Allen Wick in Daylight Sucks, Arab Befke, was mm-hmm. a show for Telemundo. It was a telenovela for Telemundo, which was actually the most successful in international sales in the history of of, uh, of the company. And the show is called Doña Bárbara. And in it, I played a woman who at her 30, 33 to 35 years of age already felt that she was an old maid and that no one would ever pay any attention to her. And she was focused on, you know, her family and whatever, just, you know, her 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 nephew and her niece and all of that. She wasn't concerned about herself. And a young man that she had tutored when she was a younger girl and whom she had taught to read comes back into her life and proclaims that he has always been in love with her. He's eight years her junior, and she just feels like, oh, my God. I'm just way too old for him. And it develops into this gorgeous love story about a, an older woman, younger man. And it captured the imaginations of many women in the United States and Mexico and all over South America. And it garnered this massive fan club called the Mariposas because that is what he would call his character, would call my character a butterfly because I was always flying from his hands. Pardon, if you will, the oh. melodrama. Yeah. No. So, um, so as of as of that as of that project and this fan base that developed, I had had the idea for a jewelry line, and it's mm-hmm. about women's empowerment. And it, it, I, I, I designed a butterfly that instead of the bug, if you will, in the center of the butterfly, it's a woman. It's a silhouette of right. a woman, and she's carrying the world in her hand. She's got the world in her hands, and she's in flight. And the um, the genre, I mean, the, the 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 theme behind it is mariposa, find your wings. Mariposa encuentra tus alas. And I suggest that all women are butterflies, capable of flight. And uh, and I developed the the I, I I designed it. I asked my mother, who's an artist, she paints, to please. Um, draw what I had what I had envisioned and she did and Craig and I actually would say this is again this is a man that is behind you this is a man that is that is encouraging you to to live out your dreams and to and to you know have these ambitions and we went to Miami Fashion Week and he was looking for jewelers that he thought might be right for this project and he found her for me and her name is Lisa Shadan and she's an extraordinary jeweler Venezuelan she has her her um, company out of Venezuela she She's just an extraordinary artist, and she works a lot with uh, Swarovski crystals, which we have on this project, right. and, uh, Mariposas. And uh, Mariposa Katie is the name of the line, and she works with uh, coppers and silvers, and she's you know bronzes and metals, and she's just a lovely artist. And we asked Aww. to meet with her the next day. We said, could you could you meet with us at Starbucks in on Lincoln Road? And she said yes. And so we brought the painting that my mother had done of the idea, the concept behind this, the butterfly with the woman in the center in flight. And uh, and she said, oh, my God, please, please, I want to be a part of this. So we were going back and forth for about a year um, with different ideas that she had of how to bring that vision and that painting to life. And finally, we found it. And it's just, they're beautiful, and I wear them every day and everywhere I go. I've had people take them off my neck, like, I need to buy it now. And I'm like, <laughs> please go online to mariposacady.com and get yours, because this one has my energy on it. Your energy's great. I want it right now. I'm like, seriously? I've had that happen at banks and, you know, different places <laughs> when you're dealing with tellers. I've had to take my necklace off and hand it to them oh my in exchange gosh. for See, no, a nominal there amount you of go. cash. Yeah. This is why I wanted to bring that up. So she's got necklaces, she's got earrings, she's got rings, and she's got bracelets. So I have to ask you this question. Um, yes. 
it wasn't so long ago because I do red carpets, um, and uh, I have a project that I'm working on, and so I want to get permission from you for this. Um, I am putting together, and most people are not happy with me right now because I have to delay this, but I am putting out a calendar, and uh, I do book reviews, I do film reviews, etc. And so what we've done is I'm, I'm doing a calendar of book reviews slash film reviews slash whatever. And so it's a cast of a movie and myself and pictures and different designer dresses. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be if I begged Katie to let me wear one of her pieces in this calendar and then oh millions my of God. people can see your work? Just oh saying. my God. It would be it would be an honor for me. Right? It's getting exciting on this show. And the gifts aren't even done yet, folks. We're not even done yet. And now we've got a festival what? and we have jewelry and it continues. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. Thank you. Oh I love God. your jewelry. It's, oh my gosh. And you know why? Because let me tell you, I have a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old at home besides my daughter, and I also have an older son. And my boys do these rainbow loom things, you know, the bracelets. They do my bracelets, and they do my necklace yeah. for me, and I wear all this jewelry. And so they're like, oh Mom, you're going to be on red carpet. You have to wear those. So I literally I wear love, rainbow I loom bracelets all the time. Such a su- I love that you're such a supportive mother, and I love that you have the ding, support ding, of ding. your children. And I, I love that ding, you're a ding. team. Well, and the thing I is, too, fantastic. it's weird because – you know, I've seen you on a red carpet before, and I go on these red carpets, and my 10-year-old is like, Mom, you're showing too much. He'll look at this dress, and he'll be like, you can't wear that. Oh, you're so, too much. Oh, that's and so you can't funny. do this. And it's so cute. And I'm like, I have to watch what I wear, and if I try to take these bracelets off, they kill me. They're like, seriously, Mom? You can't take that off. So I have to wear nice jewelry, and I have to wear this. So I'm betting that these butterflies have worked well, and they're very empowering. And, and the reason I want to wear it in the calendar is because it's about the message. It's lovely jewelry, but for me, it all comes down to message. Whether it's book, yeah, well, whether the message film, is the message story. is extremely important. It would be yeah, it's about ding, women's ding. empowerment. It's about women finding uh, my 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 idea behind the wings, which is an analogy, is find whatever it is as a woman that helps you to take flight, whether it be uh, a career and education, uh, spiritual path, uh, sexual orientation, uh, being a mother, being a wife being single, being a priestess, being whatever it is that you that you need to find in your life that 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 resonates to you as happiness. Do that. Attach that to you and fly. That's I the idea. It. That's awesome. Behind and she said it. yes, folks. Woo hoo! I'm so excited. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. yes, a thousand I times it. and I'm honored. I can't believe that you're that you're Gifts coming out. Done yet, awesome we're things. not done. I know we're not done. Well, I can't help it. On this show I figure if you're going to come at 1030 in the morning onto my program and I'm awake, which I am, and I'm doing a show, we have to make it a little bit fun. And, you know, Dominic and I have only worked together once. This is the very first time, actually. And so um, Dominic Friesen is, woman, right? Dominic Fries, yeah, he's, he's an amazing dude. He really is. He is a, uh, he's, he's, what can I say? He's a badass. He's, he right. really is. He's an extraordinary. Yeah, he's an extraordinary. He's so nice. Um, he's, he is well, oh, nice. Well, his his you know his his Twitter feed, his personal his personal Twitter feed. If you look at it, it says, mm-hmm. as as with the police department, uh, press. Some I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but publicists are here to <laughs> yeah. serve and protect. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely yeah, I love, love it. it. And, he's, love and he it. was amazing because I was venting on Facebook the other day because I'm like, I, I work with a lot of publicists and I have guests that get booked on my show and then they pull a no show. They don't show up, you know, they don't call or they're calling and their calls are dropped. And I'm like, you oh, know, he won't work with somebody that's going to pull that crap. It drives me insane. And I was like, I told, I, I was on Facebook and I was frustrated and he's like no 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 not all of us are like that and then so he came to me about you and I'm like okay well you know I don't really know this guy I'm gonna give it a shot so Dominic I gotta say you're the man she is so lovely she is so awesome and I'm not gonna lie he's not hard to look at did I just say that on air yes I did and moving right along I'm gonna hear about that later yeah anyway (laughs) I know right Craig, you didn't yeah, hear he's that. Always been, no, like, I've been working with Dom. I know, but he's so pretty. <laughs> I, no, I've been working with Dom for ten years, and he was he was a oh, he nice. was a very pretty uh, early twenties uh, blonde dude in L. A. And now he's a a very pretty, he's real pretty you know, now, in, in his thirties right? blonde dude in L. A. Absolutely, right? and he's absolutely, so sweet, yeah. and he really is very professional, very amazing, absolutely lovely. So that's awesome. Okay, now folks, I got to tell you this. I knew from the start before I even started researching her. Within the first day of research, I knew I was going to like her because we're kindred. We like a lot of the same. Things. For instance, we know that Katie is a fan of things such as The Wizard of Oz, Broadcast mm-hmm. News, Moonstruck, mm-hmm. Rick Springfield, my high school crush, thank you very much. Oh my God. Katie Garland. Stop it. And I'm going to excite you because guess what? I'm interviewing one of the new cast of The Walking Dead, and I know you're a fan. 
We're, we're I'm massive a fans of The Walking Dead. Who, okay, who are tell you me something. Why? Okay, first of all, tell me why. Because all I see is dead people walking around like zombies, and I'm thinking, why are you people watching this show? No, I don't no, get it's it. not What's about the, the zombies. Appeal? No, the zombies, okay, no, the zombies are just – no, the zombies are props. The zombies are just there. Really? It's about the storylines okay, so- of these people. This is okay. this is a story of survival. This is okay. a story of uh, this is a story of survival, my dear. No, listen. Okay. Mm. This uh, the Walking Dead is about what do we really need in this life? Do we need all the crap that we have? What if we had it taken away? What if we had only a backpack? And what okay. if every day was about just being reminded how precious life is? And how precious the lives of the people we love are. And how difficult it is to make a connection with another human being and trust issues that we all have. The Walking Dead is actually an extremely profound walk for all of us through the psychological aspects of the human condition in this life. The zombies are mere, they're they're just, they could be a table, they could be a chair, they could be whatever it is. They are a threat. Ah. They represent the threat to the human being of self-destruction, which in this case would be death, but it's, in my opinion, it's an analogy. And but, but a lot of the time, they're just there. They're just props. This is about people and the experiences that they're having as far as if, if we had everything taken away from our precious phone on down the line, how would mm-hmm. we survive and what would we learn uh. from that? And the thing that gotcha. these characters are learning is that the only thing that matters is love love and family and friendship and lasting bonds that are based on trust. That's what this Amen is about. That. Yeah. I love it. So no, the walking See, now I'm excited. deep. Just like sex in the city oh. is extremely deep. People don't realize, oh. you know, men I don't know realize. they don't tell me about it. And I'm still looking for my Mr. Big in case any of you are listening. So want Mr. Big. I met Mr. Big, the real Mr. Big once very quickly. He is yeah, um, Chris, Chris a little no, different in person. He oh, is no, lovely. He's, I no, have he's to say. so not Mr. Big. He's so not Mr. Big. Well, and and I that's agree with not you. What and he's I, about. and I think that the whole show, it, you know, Sex and the City, you either, I always find that women either love it or hate it. Like you have a whole group of people that are total Sex and the City groupies. Like I have all of them in my living room. But that's because they call me, you know, Katie Bradshaw's or you know, so Carrie Carrie Bradshaw. Bradshaw. So for me, right, it, it's, you know, more of a different thing. But I think people love it or they hate it, and it's kind of, you know, across the board, just like with Walking Dead. Now I have to research it because I'm interviewing, and you'll have to ask me off air. Some publicist came to me and said, hey, we give this girl exposure. So I know it's a female from the show. I know nothing about this show, by the way. Oftentimes people wow. come to me and they'll be like, okay, so I'm going to have to start, like, watching it. Well, that and I introduced my kids to Rocky, so now uh, Apollo Creed is coming on my show. So excited. Carl oh, Weathers my God, is coming that's to the show. awesome. Congratulations. I know, right? Uh, the well, Thank you. Dead, um, yeah, The Walking Dead. If you if you speak to, in, in my humble opinion, my humble mm-hmm. unsolicited opinion, if you sure. speak to whoever this very lucky and I'm sure extremely talented <laughs> actress is, yes. if you speak to her about um, the, the the survival aspects of these characters and what okay. what what the characters are meant to learn within the confines of this of this make believe world, this this apocalypse, you know what it is okay. that they're meant to learn. That's gonna. That's gonna just. She's gonna be all over that. So oh my gosh, not look at about that. the zombies. She's so it's awesome. So not, that just saved me like, like all this time. Thank you. It's not about men. Sex in I the know. city is not about women with men. Sex in the city is about their personal growth. In my there opinion, you if you if you are a combination of all of these women, if you take if you take the 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 positive aspects of all of these women and learn from from what their characters stand for. You're gonna be you're you're gonna be a difficult badass to bring down as a, as a female, because sure. these women have something to say. You know that Miranda, the strength of Miranda, the romance of of Charlotte, the realism of of uh, of Samantha, and the oh, dreamer right. in Carrie. These are right. these are these are the aspects that you need to pull as a woman to say I need to be a combination of all of this. I need to be a combination of strength and vulnerability. These writers are, are much more profound than they're given credit, credit for. You know, they have a message. And if you hear the message, then then that's why you need to be a fan of these shows, you know, and watch them. Oh, no, I agree. And it sucks that yeah. you live so far away because I would totally be like, I do this all the time. I invite my girlfriends over and we do like movie night or TV night. We have wine, we have food, and then we sit and we watch it and we talk about boys. But you live oh so far God. away, you know, I can't have you over oh for the second God. city marathon. Thanks a lot. I would Katie. love, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. 
well, you know, <laughs> when I go to New York, apparently that'll be happening. Okay, Absolutely. let's talk some star moments here. First of all, how badass is this? Listen to this. She's attended the Academy Awards. I've only, like, dreamed of that since I was eight, thanks so much, in 1989. Then she went to the Billboard Latin Music Awards in 2011. Another red carpet I wouldn't mind going. And then get this. She's met Ellen Sick. Hello. How oh cool my- are you? <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously? We need to tweet Alan about this. He's going to laugh. Um, Alan, Seriously, yeah, man. Not- uh, what? I can't. I, I'm like jaw. I'm like jaw stuck right now. Do you hear those experiences? Those are like lifetime oh experiences. Well, okay. okay, here we go. Uh, I can tell okay. you one by one. I did. I did not quite human too with Alan Thicke, and Alan Thicke and I yeah. have stayed in touch. Yeah, it was a it was a Disney film, and it was very successful. And they they had done Not Quite Human without me, and then in Not Quite Human two, uh, the character of Chip, who is a robot son. Uh, Alan Thicke's robot son in the movie falls in love with another robot that he meets at the university, and that's me, and I played the female robot, and it was great fun. And Alan was maybe the loveliest human being to ever work with, just a sweetheart and lovely, lovely, lovely man. And we have kept in touch through social media. We retweet each other and, you know, repost each other, and it's it's lovely. Alan Thicke, hi. Come on my show, Alan Thicke. We love you here. I will will tweet him. I'll I'll let him know that you want it. you. Love oh you. my God! Uh, he w- I'm sure he would love to do the show. I'm sure he would like. I'd to. even more love to like date his son. I didn't say that on social media and or radio right now either. He has a lovely oh, son. Oh, are, we are we talking about Robin? Are we talking about? Oh, I will moment. have you know right? that Robin declared his love for me at, at 12 years of age. Okay, I used to like Katie. Now I'm not liking you anymore. You suck. <laughs> See, you get all the cool dudes, including well, Craig Riley. Come on. Here's the thing. At the time, at the <gasps> time he was 12 and I was 18. That's the thing. Aww, so that so was cute. not going to work out. But Robin, Robin, hear, is, yeah. yeah, he's a, he's an amazing artist and an amazing human being. And he was such a romantic. He would be like, Katie, can we? Do you want to? Do you want to go up on 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 the roof of the studio and watch the sunset? Aww. That was Robin Thicke. Aww. So Robin Thicke is a beautiful human being. And then shortly oh after gosh. that, he met the girl that would be his wife for for many right. many years. And so he's right. yeah, he was yeah, he was. You could tell he was going to be a one woman guy, and you could tell he was just going to be this amazing Aww. this amazing you know family man and human being and yeah hey, so that's before I forget. that speaks right that speaks of alan as a, as a father um okay. and then the oscars the oscars i went yeah. when i was also 18 um oh i went with keith coogan who was my boyfriend at the time and we had done a Disney yes. movie together called spooner and he was mm-hmm. lovely for inviting me and not his mom Aww. and it was a surreal experience when you've got all these people kind of walking in front of you and i sat with drew, drew barrymore and winona Ryder, and it was fun oh because gosh. we watched yeah winona um gina davis won best supporting actress that year and oh, Winona yeah. had done Winona had done uh Beetlejuice with 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 Gina Davis. So that was okay. fun and they were lovely. And um it that was a that was a fun experience. Jack Nicholson as I was walking by because I was wearing a very kind of it was a Spanish style tight dress and Jack Nicholson as I was walking by lowered his glasses and kind of eyed my rear end so I can carry that with oh, me for the rest of my life. My and, God people are you hearing yeah. this? And I was walking around with Drew all night, and Drew, by the way, is one of the most beautiful human beings you will ever meet in your life. Oh, she's just, so she's a beautiful human being. She's She's got a heart that just is, okay. is bigger than her body, and she's just lovely. Oh. So people kept walking up to her at the awards, and because of that, I met, you know, Melanie Griffith and, and uh, Don Johnson and Cher, and oh my it was it was an amazing <gasps> night. It really was. Did you yeah. just say Cher? Oh, my I did, God. I, I, I did say oh. that. Oh, did say my that. God. Okay, so now we've reached the point of this interview where, okay, now everyone has been asked this question. This is a blanket question, and I know, Katie, you're going to do this for me. I know you're going to say the word yes when I ask this. Every okay. person that comes on the show, I have this quest that I'm on. I have my fantasy five. What that means is there are five people on this earth that I want to interview, besides Katie Barberi, by the way. So now my dream has come true today. <laughs> Listen okay. to her. She's like, yeah, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> there's this actor that's on this list. I have been chasing him, and I kid you not, I've been trying to interview him for almost 18 months, and I'm almost ready okay. to give up. Okay, now, okay. Okay. Now, I know you're going to tell me that you know Michael Madsen, and you have his phone number, and you're just going to call him up and be like, you need to do Cindy's show. I know you're going to say it. No, say I yes don't right know him, now. but I think Craig does. <gasps> 
oh my God, don't even go there. Cause I'm like, oh my God, do you know, I've asked every guest and I mean it like every guest get asked this question because I'm like, you know what? I'm getting frustrated now. You know, I adore his work. I just, I literally, yeah, I don't even a, know what else. Yeah, he's a lovely actor. Let me, let me ask right now, my love. Sure. By any chance, do you know Michael Madsen? <sighs> he's gonna say yeah. Do it, Craig. No, but he's a great. Er, no, he doesn't know him personally. Is he? Is he not out of Chicago? <laughs> but Craig says, but he's a great freaking actor. Is he not out of Chicago? <laughs> I'm crying, yeah, folks, Craig's right like, now. Dude, are you show, kidding me? Crying. Kill Bill. Stop it. Um, right? Okay. Rest but that dog, doesn't mean. Dumb and Louise. But we don't. But we don't. We don't stop because we don't. Oh, we we now. we track down and we find and we conquer. That's what we. I do. mean, it's like this is insane. I I said this to a publicist the other day. I'm like 18 months. I'm like, I love me some Madsen, but we might have to be like Santa if you don't bring him. It's not happening. I'm like, come on now. I mean, I, I'm a little flustered, and I won't lie. I know that the bigger you go up, the harder it becomes. But it's like you know. I, I just, I got to ask that question right? and I've asked okay. it. So I'm like, okay, fine. But you're amazing. I can't believe you've had all those experiences. She's been on every carpet that I want to be on and people look oh, at her butt. Oh, stop. It's, is I she mean, amazing they're or wonderful, what? They're, they're wonderful experiences, but the, but the truth oh, of the God. matter is, the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is you have to stay hungry. You know, you've had the experience right. and that's great. And it's what's next. I agree. Uh, Craig is asking if you are, what's your account on Twitter? Uh, I am at Sin's account, which is C-I-N-S and then the word That's account. It. Yeah. That's okay. It. Yes. Cool. So we're following that would be you little now. Me. Oh, I love you. Okay. Now I have a question. Let's turn it to the family side of things. I wanted to ask about uh, Carmina, your sister, because typically in a family of creatives, normally it's not abnormal for the sisters or brothers uh, to be in the same sort of creative mindset or in that family of things. So is your sister creative as well? Is she an actress? Does she do anything in the field? She, I, 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 I monitor her, her Instagram and her Facebook and what have you. This is kind of sad, and I'm just going to be very straight about it. I've oh, never I'm actually so sorry. No, oh, it's I'm okay. so sorry. I, I, I have that. No, it's all right. It's a bit of a divided family, but I have all the love in the world for her, and I do see the creative aspects. Uh, and we do we do talk through Facebook and we talk through Messenger and what sure. have you. And I would love to someday meet her. But I do see some of the things that I was into as a teenager. I see that in her, and I see that creative aspect in her. And I would love to develop a relationship with her when I'm able um, at some okay. point. But right now she's yeah she is my sister. Uh, she's my half sister. Um, I have never actually met her. I saw her once when she was an infant, but uh, she is uh, she she does look like she is creative, and we have talked a little okay. bit about that. Gotcha. Okay. So, but that's now, okay. I wanna, but, um, uh, uh, more honest, I could never be, could I? So. Well, right, and you know, obviously, as a journalist, oftentimes, you know, someone will warn you of something or whatever, and I try to be as thorough as I can because oftentimes, when you have that family base, you know, it's not unusual. You come from musicians, actress, actresses, that sort of good stuff. Um, I find you so fascinating because you, you touch so many different areas in so many different ways and so many different takes about it. If you watch Katie on, uh, on a stage, so to speak, and you look at these different performances that she's given, and I don't know if you notice this about yourself, you alter yourself to accommodate what you're doing in that moment. You go into that moment 150% when you're in it. I can see the fierceness in your eyes uh, and the character portrayal that you possess at that time. And I'm not lying. I've watched you. I've literally made it a point to look at you, do what you do. Um, Well, thank you. And everyone has a different aspect of that. Well, uh, go back and look at yourself. No lie. I mean, seriously, I I looked at you and I thought to myself, the one thing that I could see you doing, and you're going to laugh, is a Xena type thing. Remember Xena the warrior? I don't know if you've yeah. ever done anything like that. Well, I, I am the visual inspiration for Eva Allenwick. And I that know, is, but I would that, is that. that is that she is along those lines. She is an unstoppable warrior. And so okay. when when Craig developed that character for me, he had to have been inspired by that, you know? Oh, see, look at that. So, I am um, somewhat in tune there. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely, so, 100%. But- the one thing we haven't covered yet, which we're about to do now, which is your movie and television work, because people need to know about that. But before I start, I want to ask this question, because any actress that comes on, we talk about this a lot. You're very big about pushing positivity and strength and um, being a supporter of oneself. So my question to you is this, in your take, and this is your own personal opinion, in terms of Hollywood and the big screens and such, there's still a great deal of talk about how Hollywood has not come full circle in terms of empowering women with roles that are 
good, strong characters for them. Mm-hmm. Do you see a change in that? Do you see how women are getting more opportunity, or do you still absolutely? Think and I, absolutely, okay. and I'm one of the I'm one of the few people that I don't I, I I'm one of the few people I I, I completely respect all criticisms that are that are thrown out there because I think that I think that any criticism that's thrown out there pretty much in any aspect of you know of life as far as well there's mm-hmm. another side to this and you need to see this anyone that creates that 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 evokes thought um I appreciate so I appreciate all the criticisms about how there aren't enough roles for strong women but I actually disagree mm-hmm. maybe there aren't enough roles to fill the amount of actresses that are out there now that's I like a different that. story. The entertainment <laughs> yes, industry is. is is one of the one of the most toughest one of the toughest. It may be the toughest industry in the world as far as competition goes. There are not mm. enough roles to fill all of the all of the people that act and that want to act in this world. But as for uh, it, the roles that that are out there, there 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 being. Uh, writers out there that are writing roles for strong women, st- women that grow within the the confines of the project, women that change, women that learn, women that be, uh, that acquire strength through the experiences in the project. I do believe that that is happening, and 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 there was a time when obviously it was all the woman behind the man kind of a thing. Sure, uh, the woman behind the man kind of a thing, and you know, as as writers on Daylight Sucks, we are writing about. Uh, you know, even though it's a comic book, we are writing about strong women and we are writing, you know, these roles are of strong women and, and women that will kick some ass in defense of what they believe in. But I don't believe we are the only ones. You know, right now, if you watch The Walking Dead, um, the the character of, uh, oh, my God, it's it's uh, Glenn's wife and Beth's sister, Maggie, the character of Maggie okay. is growing so much, and she is becoming the leader. And the, it, it's it's it, we are in a time we are in a time of the strengthening of of women. We just had a female, the first female presidential candidate, who has won the popular vote. Uh, this is a time when women are are uh, our our strength and our ability um, uh, to 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 lead and to lead with love and to lead with strength and to lead with encouragement and to lead with sensitivity is being recognized because our, those are, are actually some of the biggest strengths that a human being can have. And we as women have the ability to lead in that way with using those strengths. And so um, I believe that there are roles out there for women now that there weren't before, and I believe that it's just getting better. I am not one of the people that says, oh, my God, it's all about the girlfriend part. That's not true. Sure. There is so sure. much out there now about women's empowerment and, and lead roles for women and how strong women are. And women in the industry – are becoming stronger. Uh, the woman that plays um, the female lead in House of Cards, Robin Wright Penn, or Robin yes. Wright, uh, refused to continue on with the series unless she was paid the same uh, the same wages as uh, as Kevin Spacey. And another female actress just did the same thing on 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 a different show. And uh, it's it's important. Women are are coming into power. Women are asserting themselves. And women have uh, a great deal to say and a great deal to contribute to society. And uh, I think that the internet, and it's, the entertainment industry is tremendously progressive, and they're already ahead of the game in that. You know, they had characters in the 50s and 60s on television like Uhura, and they were starting to try to break down those barriers. You know, on Star Trek, and and we would see that. But now I think it's just it's full blazing, and it's it's wonderful to watch. It really is. Gosh, folks, do you listen to her and you just have to say, God, she just sounds lovely. Sorry. I just had to get my two cents there. <laughs> I wish okay, that so were the truth. No, it is the truth. Oh, it my God. Cut it out. Seriously. Really? Oh, my Lord. Okay, let's talk about TV and movie here. Um, and then I got another surprise for you. Oh, hell, let's just give you the surprise now. So here's surprise number three. And this you probably don't know about me uh, because the one, the one reason I wanted to do this interview, which Dominic doesn't know either, you have produced a comic book. What you may not know is um, my son, my 12-year-old, yes. has done a comic book. Um, oh, my God. He, he was a uh, – well, I'm going to tell you right now. He uh, okay. was a – up until two months, a little over two months ago, he was a seizure patient for three years. And uh, wow. he decided on his own 
you know, mom being the professional author here, I, I said nothing. And he, on his own, illustrated and then wrote this comic book. And uh, I went to this lovely person who I think is finally going to illustrate this book. And our goal is to go to four comic cons and we're going to raise money for seizure research and it will be in every hospital in all the 50 states. I promised him that I would do this. So I thought to myself, if I'm going to be working four comic cons and sitting at a table with my beautiful child, I thought, how cool would this be if the Daylight Sucks people had their stuff there and we're doing a little cross promotion? Just throwing that out there. Just a thought. Sin, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Are you okay? Like, I don't, I, no, I'm not. Because Dominic, you know, books interviews every week. I had no idea that this I would know. be such an amazing experience. Right? Yes, That's a thousand times. Kind of, yes, yeah. we would love to do oh that. Oh, my God. They said yes again. It's like prom. Except you don't we have would, Michael Madsen. Where's we would the love Madsen, to, well, people? Okay. Michael Madsen You're is a goal. That when life so is supposed adult. to put him in front of you, he will. It, I, it will. He's it my best will friend in my head. I'm like, dude, how do you not know that? I mean, I ask everyone about this man. I'm like, how does he not know this? I'm like, seriously. I mean, I'm doing a tribute at my festival to him. I'm like, if that doesn't get in there, I'm done. I'm like, that's I, we it. Will, We're we, done. We will, we will make We're a done. collective okay. effort to make sure Michael Madsen is exactly. made aware right? We're doing of it. your We're feelings doing it. about him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm a stalker who's going to a hospital. <laughs> thanks, Black Kitty. Didn't want to tell anyone that. Yes, but okay, but here's the important thing. Here's crazy, the important thing. Crazy you have to be a stalker yeah. with power. <laughs> I so am. And let me tell you, I might have details after today. There's a lead, but we're not going into that on air because then I'd be giving that away. But I am clever. Okay, no, I've no, absolutely some things not. my publicist. I definitely. would love. So we'll see. We would love to do this with you. We would love oh to God, do Comic-Con with you. Yeah. With your son. That would oh, my be gosh. Amazing. It, it, it is. It's very exciting. And, I, and it's, you know, He's my hero. And so for me to do this is a very, it's a labor of love. It's, it, I don't think well, he even realizes how much this That's means. extraordinary. You're don't. both extremely lucky and it's awesome. We try. I know. We're kind of yeah. cool that way. Okay, so let's talk yeah. movies. Here's the funny part about Katie. So here she goes off and does this little film that we've all heard called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Then all of a sudden somebody's telling me, hey, did you hear she did that Garbage Pail Kids movie? I'm like, what? Yep. So here she's yep. in Ferris Bueller and then there's Garbage Kids. Talk to me about that. That's a little diversity, Katie. A little out there. That's well, a little okay, here's the thing. I mean, Ferris Bueller, uh, Ferris Bueller was a mistake. Ferris, I mean, it wasn't, a, it was Whoa. a wonderful, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let, no, let me, let me rephrase. It was, it was, okay. it had nothing to do with me auditioning for anything. I was on the set of Ferris Bueller's Day Off with my then best friend who I've also maintained contact with through social media and whom I love and who's a wonderful girl by the name of Christy Swanson. And she was playing the role. You've seen Ferris how many times in your life? Oh, like three, maybe more. Okay. Seriously. Okay. Do you remember the girl Sloan in, 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 in the high school in the classroom who says, um, he's six. See, my best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows a kid. I still know her line. Because I was oh visiting her on the set that day, and we were going to have lunch. And so her parents brought me. Her parents were there with us, and her parents brought me to the set, and we were going to have lunch. And they introduced, they introduced to uh, the extraordinary director, whose name I am about to be reminded of because I don't know why it's escaping me. Craig? That's okay. You're human. These things happen. The Thank director God Craig is in the loop here. John Hughes. I wanted to say yes. John, yes, 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 right. John Hughes. Okay, got it. Craig worked with him on, on Weird Science, but um, oh, he cool. was, uh, he was he, they brought in the extras to play different cast, uh, to, play, to play different classmates alongside Christy. And they, okay. he wanted to feature them, and he wanted to do close-ups of them. And he said, these people are way too old. All of the kids were way too – they had to have one guy shave. He was in his 20s. And he said, none of these, none of these people are, 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 are young enough to be high school characters. So I started moving toward Mr. John Hughes, started moving toward him, started walking toward him, and just kind okay. of sidling up next to him. But I was there to have lunch with Christy. That's why I'm saying it had nothing to do with anything that ah, I did. It. And so okay. he turned to me got and he it. said, are you an actress? And I said, yes. And he said, how old are you? And I said, 14. And he said, oh. if you were bored out of your mind listening to an economics teacher give a lecture that you don't want to hear, what would you do? So I made this ridiculously bored face that made everybody on the set laugh. And he said, don't move from there. 
and he set up the cameras and he put the camera on me and that's why I'm in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I did not oh audition gosh. for that gig. Garbage Pail Kids movie, on the contrary, I auditioned like eight times to do that movie. And I auditioned opposite Jennifer Aniston and Don Schroeder oh, and uh, yeah, and and Trisha Fisher, and I won that role, and it was it was a it was a lot of fun to do. And I was awesome. 15 at the time when I did the Garbage Pail Kids movie, and at the time it was completely panned, and people were just they were they were disgusted by it and these disgusting little creatures. And now it's this, it's this huge. It's like uh, it has its 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 um its fan following and it's become this this uh it's it's its own its own genre of movies that become famous, you know, well after their time. So That's amazing. Look at that. Yeah, now the garbage I don't want to forget too cool. We're going to talk about the TV side of things because my son had a question because the minute he found that I was interviewing, they all wa- they watch every time. Like for instance, when they know I'm having someone on like I'm trying to get Jared Leto from Suicide Squad, my son's going to have a heart attack and die right there. It's like Oh, it's, he's it makes he's me, lovely. I know he tries to get me to like interview, like now he wants Kylo Ren. I'm not a Kylo Ren fan, but I'm going to try to see if I can get Adam Driver. So when my kids ask me to get somebody or they ask a question, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on this. So they knew that you worked on Nickelodeon. So my son Tristan was like, okay, mom, I didn't see the show that she was on, but I know Nickelodeon, it's a really cool channel. So he wanted me to ask you what it's like to work for a kid channel because you're not a kid. He's like, mom, she's not a kid. I'm like, I know, but they don't really get that. So, okay. I, I mean, a lot of a lot of these kids that were on the show with us are now the visual inspirations for these characters in Daylight Sucks, and we're actually working with them now as nice. producers on this project because they they have, you know, Rahart Adams, Tyler Alvarez, Paris Smith, Autumn Wendell, uh, Louis Tomeo, uh, Jason Drugger, Jackie Frazee, Nick Mariko, Zoe Berger. They're all on Daylight Sucks as visual inspirations, and and we have we have a, a licensing agreement with them, so we're now working with them nice. in that aspect, but. When okay. I was doing Every Which Way, it's interesting because Craig started when he was really young and I started when I was really young. And it's so amazing to see from a different aspect now as adults these things that these kids are going through and how the situations don't change for them as human beings and for them as artists in the entertainment industry. They have the same kind of conflicts that we had when we were kids. So we had this extraordinary opportunity to talk to them and to say, look, when I was your age and I was going through this as a person, as a, you know, in my case, as a girl or as a As a guy and as an actor, as an actress, this is what I was going through. This is the way I chose to resolve it. And this is how, you know, this is what I would humbly recommend that you do with this problem that you're having. It was an extraordinary opportunity for me as an adult to look back on my life as a child actress and see that these kids go, you know, all these years later through exactly the same stuff and kind of be there to mentor and to, and to, you know, to help them out and to talk to the parents and say, you know, when, when we went through this back at this time, this is what was going on and this is what we can recommend. And I was telling you at the beginning of, of the interview, we got off on another tangent, but Craig wrote a book called 27 and all washed up about his experiences from an adolescent actor, you know, 18 to, to mm-hmm. up until, you know, up until now as a producer. And sure. he, he gave a lot of the parents a copy of that book and said, carry this in your car with you when you take these kids on interviews because it, it's, it's a guide as to where they are in their career and where they, where they should be heading and what to do and what not to do. So for us, it was awesome to be on the shoot with these kids. A lot about what not to do, Greg says. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a lot of these experiences with these kids and then just to watch them grow as actors with every season and to watch them become more ambitious in their careers and in their lives and in, in what they, in what they're seeking and to, you know, and, and to grow as performers and to learn more about, you know, how to work with a camera and how to, you know, how, and then, and then also just to admire, you know, these extraordinary talents and, you know, a few of them were already seasoned honed professionals working on this show and to just kind of be in awe of them it was truly an extraordinary experience and without question the best part of the experience was working with the awesome now i don't want to forget to mention some of the staple favorites she's been on from the bronx zoo to silver spoons to the judge 
Yeah. A question for you. I was because just watching. I was just watching Dolly Parton's movie, uh, The Colors oh, really? the Colors, a Christmas film, and Ricky Schroeder okay. is in that movie. He plays Dolly's. <gasps> he plays Dolly's dad, and it had been. Seriously? I was fourteen, but it had been a lot. Yeah, he plays Dolly's dad. He plays Lee Parton in this in oh this Dolly gosh. Parton movie that you can you can stream right now, and um, oh it had been. I was 14, but it had been a lifelong dream of mine to work with Ricky Schroeder. And when I booked Silver Spoons, uh, he did not disappoint. He was lovely every day. I he bet. and Alfonso Ribeiro, and that's one of my. But it was it was it was it, what what Ricky calls one of his favorite episodes of Silver Spoons was this was this episode. You know where we Aww. we uh, we set each other up uh, for to have a blind date. We're we're chatting online, and we set each other up to have we set we set ourselves up to have a blind date with each other. And so when each of us receives a picture of the other, because at the time you could only chat, you couldn't send pictures and stuff like that. Sure. So when we receive a picture in the mail of each other, then we start imagining how awful the date is going to be because we're going to make fools of ourselves. And it's just really sweet. It's a really sweet episode of Aww. Silver Spoon. That's yeah. so awesome. Now, I yeah. have to ask you this because I notice you tend to run along the TV side of things. So is it just your preferred preference in terms of the acting experience to do it in the television no, venue? It's just what I've film? ended up booking more. I, I You know, okay. I like television. I like television. Um, I, I I have gone out for a lot of films, and I have done. We have a, a short film that's that's uh, that they're going to release shortly uh, called Reaching the Sea that I was asked to do. I love the film experience. It's a lot slower. And television, television moves faster, and maybe right. that's why I kind of gravitate toward it more. Um, but you know, being in the telenovela genre, that's all television, and that's taken up a lot of of my time in my career. So, um, you know, uh, do, doing film. Also, uh, one of my great passions is stage. I'm a very proud member of Equity. Um, and I and thought so. It, it's absolutely a goal of mine to do a lot of theater in New York. Uh, that's one of my that's one of my dreams that I'm going to make come true, and uh, and and so stage is another genre that that one has to conquer as an actor. If they Did love she what they just do. say that? Did she just say stage? Well, there's surprise number four. Are you ready for it? Oh, God, and then we got two more things in your off. I, I don't feel want to like, give you a I feel like I, I feel like I'm on Katie. This is sin. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> Let me just tell you, you know, it's easy to give you this stuff because I'm already doing it. You know what I'm talking about? And I, well, I'm not going to lie. Everybody, everybody that comes on gets something offered to them because I have the power to do so. I have well, I got, I got to tell you something. I don't know what the yes, fourth ma'am. surprise is, but I'm already so overjoyed at the other three surprises. You, I, I, I can't imagine Did you hear that, how kid? much more joy you could throw my way. But I well, admire I how how i admire how uh, everything that you're doing it's extraordinary i think it's amazing you go girl well, they say i'm kind of a cool check i hear that because they're like oh my gosh you're, it's such a compliment to be inspiring to other people in general whether it's males or females i'm very blessed that so many people find that i'm very intriguing and interesting and inspiring and it's awesome now what i was going to say to you was well you know katie I'm on that red carpet all the time, and I get invited to events. So let's have you come to New York City, and let's do some red carpet stuff. But since you have this little dream of theater, a good friend of mine by the name of Alan Bronstein works for the theater company, and I have written two plays. Um, and so he's going to help me put it on the stage. So how about when he helps me put it on the stage? Let's put Katie Barberry on the stage with us. Let's just be oh crazy. Oh, my let's God. Do it. What do you think? Oh, my God. Wow. It's, it's wow. Too much. This is fun. I'm, this is, It's like I'm, Christmas. That's all I'm going to say. I'm very excited. And here's what I I can tell you and here's what what I can promise. I will (gasps) give everything I have in everything that you're offering me to make you proud. And to make it having been worth your while to think of me. Thank you so much. Silly. Come on. Are you kidding me? I was proud of you before you came on my show. You just were nice enough to say yes. Duh. Thank you so much. Two more questions so we can get the business end of stuff done. A, when are you getting married, Mrs. I keep saying he's my fiance. So we got to do it. When are they getting married? Do we have a date? You know, I, I, we, we're right now, we, we're very focused on what we're doing. We have I an know. LLC to mark it together, which is almost more binding than 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 a marriage license. Well, honestly, yeah, I know. an LLC I know. is very binding. Um, I, 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 I don't know if I look. I've been dressed as a bride what fifteen times in my life in the <laughs> telenovela genre. I don't sure. know if I need the day. I know I need the relationship. 
and I know that I, I need his companionship in my life and his partnership, and that is wonderful. I don't know if I need the big day. We might end up yeah. deciding to do it somewhere, and people might not even know about it. You never know. We're we're very or open you could to like, what, love, what life you brings could like us. Have, you could have, like, this quick ceremony and invite, like, Michael Madsen, let's say, and then – Oh, there I go again. And I sin. Again. I, and yes. sin. And we could have just Michael Madsen and sin as, <laughs> oh our, God, as don't, our witnesses. Don't do it. Stop teasing. Cut that out right You know, now. it's don't an idea. It's, a, it's yeah, another no, it one is. of many ideas that we've thrown out there. Right? Of I how know. To become and we've had tons of ideas. Okay, now I have to do the business side of things here, which is I'm going to let you rest for a moment because I'm going to read through all these various different ways that folks can find you. Before I forget, I, I want to get this out. Dominic Friesen with Bridge and Tunnel Communications. This is what I want to say to you before I finish off with Katie. Thank you. There are reasons why people get booked on my show. And she came on and she had a message for me and she didn't know that. And without you, Dominic, this wouldn't happen. And you've restored my faith in publicists and the fact that they have quality oh. clients and they treat me well and they respect me. So thank you so very much for bringing this lovely, lovely light, light shed woman onto my show. I appreciate it very much. Now let me just read this stuff off. Uh, Kitty is on Facebook. And just so you folks know, her last name is spelled B-A-R-B-E-R-I. She has a personal page as well as Katie Barberi Actress and it's A-C-T-R-I-Z. Her Twitter handle is at Katie Barberi. The website is mariposakatie.com, also daylightsucks.com. She is on IMDb, YouTube, and her Instagram is the real Katie Winky. Have I missed anything or any other place people can find you? No, and my goodness, I sound busy. <laughs> Don't you, though? That's yeah. my last question before I do my last thing, which is, do we anticipate you having another series or a film coming in the near future, something I might not know about, something you just got cast in, et cetera, so we can throw it out there, or you just kind of – Well, I, I actually – um, hmm. I, yeah, I have a project for, for 2017. <laughs> okay, but you can't talk I, about it. I, I okay. can't say anything about it yet, and I would no, okay. if I could to you, but I can't. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I do have a project for 2017, which I'm gonna I'm gonna be juggling. You know, Daylight Sucks as a producer, which is so important to us to do correctly, oh, no. and this project that we're gonna be doing. I totally do. No, I get that. Yeah. Now, we don't want to forget to wrap this up. The last thing that we do on Sin's show is I always get the opportunity to tell Katie what I think of her. Now, I want to prepare you because I've already had a heart attack, so you just better sit down when you listen to this. This is the only part of my show that is not scripted by me. That means whatever I tell you is all heartfelt, and it's not written. It's off the top of my head. So let's round off everything before I forget. First of all, just to let you know, two hours after this episode is finished, it will be archived, which means any of your fans and followers can listen to it all year round if they want to, as far as that goes. Just to recap, in the course of this one-and-a-half-hour show, we've discovered that Katie's jewelry is going to be on my body somewhere within my calendar, which is awesome. Katie's body will hopefully be singing at my Art is Alive Film Festival June 22nd to June 25th in New York City at the Producers Club. Katie wow. hopefully is going to star in my theater production, but God, I have to find time for that. Katie's comic book, along with Craig Hurley, is going to be at the Comic-Con with my son, Sergeant Seizure and Dr. Cuckoo, and so there's that. And, well, hopefully she'll just hang out with me somewhere. Oh, someplace, God. Can I ask a question? Something. Sure. Katie, 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 but does Katie get to be your friend? Because Katie, Katie wants to be, be your friend. friend. Katie, Katie totally wants to be, be your friend. friend. <laughs> Katie wants to She's add you. Me. She's so Katie wants to me add right you. Now. Into oh, yes. her world of amazing, positive human love it, beings. Love it, love it, love that it. That is so awesome. positivity and that allow positivity to, to flow through Katie back oh to that gosh. person. That's Listen what to this. Like. This is so cool. We're so friending. This is like so awesome. Now, I don't want to forget that I, I have to tell you what I think of you, but I do have one more business thing, and I don't want to forget to tell everybody because it will get out of my head before I forget. If you have followed me on Facebook or Twitter or otherwise, you already know that I've been commissioned to do this 100 pages of work. I know that the people that are listening to this are going to be very disappointed when I say, yes, I've agreed to do the filmmaker textbook. I've agreed to do the other textbook, which means no radio shows after Katie, with the exception of one show next week for two weeks. Yes, that means I will be on a hiatus and rescheduling all of my shows for the next two weeks. Just so you folks know, that's kind of the update as far as that goes. Check my Sins Chat Corner page for that. As I mentioned, Katie's show is going to be live two hours after it's Two hours after we're done, it will be archived. I'm starting to forget what I'm doing here. Um, and thanks so much to everybody for the thoughts and the prayers. And, yes, I'm going to the doctor this afternoon for the MRI. 
stuff, update, whatever. So everybody's all caught up now. See, I forget. This audience asks me this stuff all the time, and then I forget. So right. these are my impressions of Katie Barberi. Um and like I said, this is non-scripted, so here we go. So you can just sit back and listen. Folks, the reason why I tell you the things that I do about the people that come on my show are because you do not have the wisdom or the hindsight or the research that I have. Now, granted, this is a PR person on a page coming to me and saying, hey, I got this great client. I knew nothing about her. No idea that she was on TV. Nothing. I saw her boyfriend. I saw her. And within 35 seconds of reading one positive message on this page, it made me want to know her. It made me want to interview her. And she had said not word one to me. The fact that she was on a red carpet was impressive to me. But what mattered more to me is the look in her eyes resonates the same passion that she has, I'm guessing, for her partner as she does for every project that she has. The piece of jewelry that she has that she walks around in, if you look at her on Instagram and you see this, it's her heart that resonates. I don't think she realizes that. It's the same look that she has when she's on a camera. It's the same look when she smiles at her partner, when she talks about him, and when she talks about what she loves to do. She has this hope light inside of her that's very rare in this industry today. A lot of people get rejected in film roles. A lot of people get told no and told what they're not going to do. Katie does not appear, nor does she or has she during the course of this interview, but a woman who convinces me that she can't do anything. What that means is she's going to do everything and then she's going to take all her friends and they're going to do it with her. The fact that she has persistence and patience and just she's just that damn pretty inside, outside. She makes me want to know her after an hour and a half, but she made me want to know her in the first five minutes of being a stranger. People are not strangers. People meet for reasons. We have met so we can work together to know one another, to enrich each other. Her performances and her presence enrich the lives of others. So Dominic, you did me a favor, and Katie Barberi, you did me a favor for walking into my life. Know that my door is open to you, and if I can help you, I will. You are welcome to come back on my show anytime you want. And I just, I thank you so much for taking all this time to be here. No one has ever made me cry on a radio show. Oh, shit. Why does everybody come on my show and cry? For Christ's sake, what am I doing wrong? Because you have that Barbara Walters thing, my dear. That's you have the me. Barbara Walters thing. Barbara Walters <laughs> always said, by the way, one of the best um one of the best biographies you will ever read, Barbara Walters audition. Have you read it? No. You need to I read haven't. it. Yeah. Really? Read Barbara Walters audition. Uh extraordinary woman and extraordinary things that she has to say about this industry and a lot that's going to um, enrich your, your path. But what Barbara Walters always said is, I don't mean to make anyone cry, but the reason you make a person cry is because you touch them on a different level. And I want to thank you so much for that. This has been oh my God, an extraordinary I made her cry. experience. Far Holy beyond crap. anything that I could have imagined a radio interview being. And that that of, of the profoundness and the lovely spirit that you have. And thank you so much. And everything that you said, right back at you, uh, uh, oh, double. Wow. And, and thank you for all of the opportunities. <laughs> and I can't oh wait goodness. to share them with you. And it's going to be awesome. Oh, my gosh, look at this. And don't forget, we have to get Craig on the show, so we'll have to organize well, after my two-week hiatus, which I just announced on yeah. the show. We have to get him yeah. on there. And um, when the show gets finished, um, come and find me and friend me, and then I can fill you in, give you all the deets when it comes to that kind of good stuff. And then this way, if you and I are in the same city at the same time, then we can actually face talk, because I'm big on face talk. This is great talk, but this isn't face-to-face. We need to do, like, face-to-face talk. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Awesome. All right, Katie Barbera, you're off the hook. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All my love to both of you, Craig. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Say nice things about me. Find Michael Madsen. Did okay, I do it again? we'll, I we'll it find again. Michael Madsen. You have you <laughs> have a positive experience at the doctor, and know that you have a, lo- a lot of love and light and support from people that are seeing how amazing you are. Okay. Thank you so much, my dear. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Thank right. you. Bye bye. Bye. Talk about amazing, right? Oh, my God. Look at this. I gave the show away. Just kidding. I'm I'm telling you, folks, it's killing me. It's making me feel bad that people are crying on my show. But you know what? As we all know, I don't script that last stuff. I can't help myself. Just tell the heart feels. One more time, let's throw that out there to Katie Barberi. Facebook, personal page, of course, last name spelled B-A-R-B-E-R-B-A-R. I can spell today B-E-R-I. And then her Facebook actress page is actually Katie Barberi, and actress is spelled A-C-T 
R I Z. Her Twitter handle is at Katie Barberi. The website, again, MaraposaKatie.com. And on that line, folks, lovely necklaces, bracelets, you name it, gorgeous butterflies. DaylightSucks.com, IMDb, and YouTube, and the Instagram, which is the real Katie Winky, and Winky is W I N K I. Obviously, Dominic, again, thank you so much. It's Dominic Friesen, and he, of course, owns Bridge and Tunnel Communications. If you're looking for anything on the PR side. Again, just want to reiterate to everybody the only show I'm going to do, what we'll do is I'll uh, orchestrate today with the rest of my guests for the next two weeks to make sure we reschedule them for January. Next week, of course, that's Wednesday, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time to accommodate Mr. Scott Silverman, a CNN Hero Award recipient, 32 years sober. I, I can't even begin to describe what an amazing interview that's going to be. So please tune in Wednesday, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. Again, thanks so much to my listeners. Thanks so much to my supporters. Just thanks to everybody in general. Thank you so much for everything. Um, my kitties and I are going to put up the Christmas tree this weekend and have a wonderful time before the big work begins. So we'll talk at you next week. What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. <laughs> Bye, singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, a wedding friend. ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. <laughs> bye, singing dog. <laughs> bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. <laughs> Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.